page 7 of the Fall 2011 Exam 1. Question 12 has to do with a study on nausea. Uh, pain relief medication often causes nausea in 25% of the patients taking it. We have this medication that's now newly formulated, so it should reduce this proportion. And the research team would like to test this theory about P, the proportion for the population of all patients that take the new formulation who actually are nauseated. So that's our parameter of interest. And we're going to have 50 patients who will be receiving this new formulation. Since they're going to be given actively as part of the study the actual treatment, then this study is definitely an experiment, not just an observational study. We'll record whether they, we observe them having nausea or not, but they were actively given a treatment. In terms of the hypotheses that the researchers would like to test, which is in terms of this P that's been identified here, H0 should be the status quo, that there's really no difference between this new formulation and the previous one, so the nausea rate in the population should still be about 25%. Whereas if it does the intended uh, effect, which is to reduce that rate of nausea, then we should see a proportion or rate that's less than 25%. So we have a lower tail test to the left. And we're going to set our level of significance, otherwise known as alpha, at 5%. And we're asked to talk about whether this statement's true or not regarding the consequence of a type 1 error. Now what is a type 1 error again? That's rejecting the null hypothesis when really the null hypothesis is really true. So concluding that the drug, this new formulation, really will reduce the rate, advertising that out to patients and selling it, when in fact, though, H0 is true, and so it doesn't reduce the rate. Is a type 1 error then a consequence that this new formulation really does not decrease, and it's falsely advertised and being sold to patients as doing so? That's exactly what a type 1 error corresponds to here. So this is a true statement. One of the conditions to do the sample size large enough and use a normal approximation is to check that sample size being large enough, and that was that n times p rule. Is n times p at least 10, and is n times 1 minus p at least 10? Now, the p we use here is under h naught. If h naught's true, do we have effectively a large enough sample size to do our large sample normal approximation approach? So we'll be using that null hypothesized value here and checking that 50 patients with a rate of 25%. Is that indeed at least 10? Well, that's 12 and a half. So that's at least 10, and that's really the minimum we have to do because if the smaller expected count is at least 10, then the larger one will be 2. But let's go ahead and show that for completeness. This would be with the 75% rate then, and that's the... 37 and a half, oops, not point, but 37.5, and that's also at least 10. So we're good to go. We can take our 50 patients, and having observed 11 who actually reported nausea, and work out our test statistic value. With our large enough sample size, we're going to do a large sample Z test. The test statistic takes the proportion in the sample and compares it to H0 compares the data to the null hypothesis in standard units, standardized under H0, so we use that hypothesized rate in that standard deviation. Now, p hat comes from the data. Out of the 50 patients, 11 reported nausea, so it's 11 out of 50, which happens to be 0.22, and we're going to compare that to the 0.25 in our null hypothesis using the 0.25 to work out the standard deviation on the bottom, under H0 being true with a sample size of 50. On top, we get a negative 0.2 or negative 0.03, 22 minus the 25%. And on the bottom, we get a standard deviation of about 0.06. Carrying that out a bit here in these intermediate calculations for a negative test statistic of just 0.49. A z-statistic of negative 
not even one standard deviation below that 25%. So let's keep that test statistic in mind as we move down here to our next part of our question. Using our test statistic of negative 0.49, Let's continue to find our p-value so we can make our decision and write out a conclusion. We're asked to provide a complete sketch of the p-value, labeling the curve, the axes, and reporting that actual value. It's a large sample z-test. Our p-value should show us a probability of getting our test statistic, z, as extreme or more extreme than the one we got. And the one we got here is negative 0.49 as extreme or more extreme should match with that alternative direction which was to the left. So this represents our p-value, this shaded region, this shaded area to the left of 0.49 negative under the appropriately labeled distribution which is the standard normal. Now to look up and find that value we're going to have to go to our z table table A1, and take a look at negative 0.49, so there's the negative 0.4, use the 09 column, and get an area to the left of 3121. So let's report that here. We don't have to do a 1 minus because we are looking at the area to the left. It's a little more than 30%, 3121. Now what do you think of that p-value? It's pretty large. It's quite likely to see the result we got in our experiment or something more extreme if the null hypothesis were really true. It's only when the p-value is small do we get to reject the null, less than or equal to our level of significance, which is 5%, and it's not, it's big. So we fail to reject. We'll be looking at your p-value to see if your decision is consistent with it. And then a fail to reject would lead to a conclusion that there is not enough evidence to say that that new formulation is going to do better, that it will lower that 25% nausea rate. There is insufficient evidence. Now, if you had gotten the wrong p-value due to a wrong test statistic, perhaps, and if you had said reject H0 as your decision because your p-value was small, you would have made a conclusion, which is the first bullet here, instead. So we watch for consistency. The conclusion must go consistent with the decision. The decision should be consistent with your p-value and that p-value consistent with the picture you sketched that of course comes from your test statistic you computed. So there's a full hypothesis test for a population proportion.